this on water is not really me. Yeah. Yeah. We are gonna build a Nark cabin. Well, Clark just gave you a wonderful introduction. So welcome to Walkers on Winnie. Uh, this week, um, one of the things we're doing is we're fixing the uh, some of the plumbing. So, you know, we have a, that outdoor heater. The problem is the outdoor heater happens to have a little area that's great for mice. So we had a mouse house in it, not one, but two weekends in a row. So what we've started to do to uh, address that, we've started to take it inside uh, in the shed, which we now have that uh, keeps it protected. So we need to put some quick fittings to um, uh, be able to put it on and off very easily. So I picked those up and we're just gonna install them now. Right, Clark? Yeah. Squeeze again. Like that, yeah. Just like that. Whoa. There we go. Squeeze. Squeeze. It's really hard. Squeeze. Squeeze. Uh, uh. Ooh. Now, we've got a plug. Plug? So we don't drip water in the shed like we did last time. So, I set my brother up last week to get started on foam insulating the gaps that we have around, just to keep the bugs and the critters out. Let's take a look at what he did. Hey, this is Alex, Bennett's brother. Let's seal up this shed. Girls, say hi. See, I kind of set my brother up for a little bit of failure because I gave him the gaps and cracks. That's just not going to be enough volume. It's a small can, as you can see, and these are pretty big gaps. So now I've got the big gap filler just for this purpose. So here we go. We're going to start spraying it. All right, so here we are, digging the end of the first footing, and uh, we heard about a trick from my brother, uh, also from some other sources, that uh, using a shop vac to vacuum up instead of shoveling out can be a lot more efficient. So we thought he'd give it a try. So picked up a shop vac on clearance, a 16 gallon, which happens to be the amount of volume in a 10 inch hole, so four foot 10 inch hole. So here we go. Um, right now, we are down about third. We're down about 36 inches, so got another 12 to go. Well, with hole number one dug, as Clark showed you just now, hole number two for the other front corner goes right here. Right, Clark? Two. He put in a bonus one. Uh, so, off we go. All right, so I don't know if I adequately introdu introduced the ready footings that we're using. So, much like the bunkhouse, we're using these ready footings from a place in Rhode Island. These are as strong as concrete. They can hold 11,000 pounds before they 
fail. And the thing that's funny about that is that the soil can only handle about 2,000 pounds, so these are gonna push through the soil. So they're just as strong as concrete. Um, so why use concrete footings when you can use uh, engineered ones? So we take this, we combine it with some four inch PVC, in this case, schedule 80, the inspector called for schedule 80 instead of schedule 40, which you can use schedule 40 on a smaller building, but schedule 80 for the bigger building. So we just put this together and put it down the hole. Once you put it together, you put these pins in just to keep them from coming apart. Well, there we go. Down 48 inches in a little over an hour. Set the post, it's in, and we're ready to backfill. So another issue we're having down at the dock is we don't have the ability to cross tie over to anything because we don't have a second finger yet. So in the meantime, I thought I'd put myself in an, an eight inch galvanized cleat over on a rock. So I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes with the rotary hammer drill. And then I'll put a cleat in using this uh, galvanized bolt and a lead cleat and go ahead and just tighten it in. And that way we have something to tie off to. Here we go.